I, I thank the chairman and again appreciate this hearing. Um, uh, Director, any time there's a breach of protocol or the president's personal security has been jeopardized or the White House security perimeter has been breached, is there an internal review? Yes. And are you aware, are you, can you assure the committee that you are informed any time those things happen? I am expected to be informed, yes. Um, is the President of the United States... I would assume that the President of the United States is informed. I don't know. You're the head of the Secret Service. Explain to me why you wouldn't know that. Well, your question was subjective as to whether or not I would know. Well, who, who briefs? Do you brief the president or don't? If your question is when are, there are incidents that involve the president of the United States or his, the first family and security concerns, yes. Then you do brief the president? Yes. Do you brief the president if there's been a, a perimeter breach at the White House? I have confidential conversations with the president. Do you, have, do you brief the president if he has uh, his own personal security has in any way been jeopardized? I have, I have confidential conversations with the president. And do those, you? Those have, would be the topics that we would cover in addition to other things. What percentage of the time do you inform the president if his personal security has been breached? I would say in proximity to the incident. Now, I ask you what percentage of the time do you inform the president if his personal security has in any way, shape, or form been breached? Percent of the time, 100% of the time, we would advise the president. You would advise the president? Yes. In calendar year 2014, how many times has that happened? I have not briefed him with the exception of one occasion for the 9th, September 19th incident. So the only time you've, you've briefed the president on perimeter security, the president's personal security, uh, the first family's security has been one time in, in 2014. That's correct. Mr. Chairman, as we kind of wrap up here, I think there is a bipartisan call for for change, to change. I, I would like to ask for an, an independent review. I think there needs to be a top-down review of not only security, but also the culture. And I want to refer our colleagues to this. And I, Madam uh, 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 Director, I, I don't understand why special agent basic classes, 2012 there were zero, and in 2013 there was one. In the uniform division, basic classic classes, in 2012 there was one, and in 2013 there was one. I don't understand that. I also want to, again, go back to this Inspector General's report because I think there's a serious, serious problem here. Let me read some questions and how the Secret Service agents themselves re responded. If a senior manager engages in misconduct or illegal activity, he or she is held accountable. Less than half of the respondents said that that was true. I can report a suspected violation of any rule, regulation, or standard of conduct without fear of retaliation. Only 55.8% of the respondents said that that statement was true. Again, Secret Service agents themselves in a confidential survey, when asked, the Secret Service's, Secret Service's disciplinary process is fair. Only 40.3% said yes. Disciplinary actions within the Secret Service are applied consistently for similar offenses. Only 30% said yes. Disciplinary actions within the Secret Service are at the appropriate level of severity given the offense. Only 36.6. This demands an independent investigation and review team, the FBI, military, whatever it takes. But they need to look at the management. They need to look at the leadership. They need to look at the culture and the security. I thank the chairman. Thank the gentleman. The